All right, guys. Matthew, um, got a um a review for you today. Um, obviously, this is one of my foraging books that I've used for a while now. Um, so obviously, it's part of the River Cottage series. This mainly covers, this just covers the hedgerow, nothing else. Um, I'll just show you a few bits of it. Um, obviously, as you can see, it, it got quite a bit of stuff on the law and stuff like that, edible and poisonous, and recipes as well. This, obviously in here, there is a forager's calendar. Um, basically it goes around most things, most everything for for what you need. You've got times of when things are going to be ready, stuff like that. Um, obviously in green, it, tell, it actually tells you... Zoom in on that. Tell you, obviously, leaves are there, seeds are there, roots all year for certain things. Again, this goes out of two pages. Obviously, it has got a big thing on conservation and the law. Because um, it's one of them things, if you're picking things off private land, it, you, can, you can get into a bit of bother. Um, so I'll, I'll show you some of the things. Um, obviously everyone knows what a pottery looks like. Um, it's got a good description in it. Um, tells you roughly where it is going to be found. Um, tells you how common it is. What areas it's common, what areas it's not. And the season of it. Which obviously with the poppy, um, the season is obviously the seed heads. Um, from late June to August, which you'd use for like things like bread and stuff like that to put on the top of. Let's see if I'll find another one. Here's the one. Um, the slow um, tells you what you're looking for. Obviously, you're looking for a small tree or shrub um, over leaves. So my hands are shaking. Um, the habitat distribution, pretty much everywhere apart from the very north of Scotland. And September and November is when you look for them. And it has a very good photo there, so it shows you what you're looking for. And obviously, I don't believe in that bit. It says most foragers have a secret slow patch. <laughs> Not me. I'm quite lucky to where I live. It's all the hedgerows are slows. Obviously that goes on to two pages because it is quite a common thing. So there's obviously cherry, there's raspberry, um, there's obviously your dog roses and your field roses and your Japanese roses. Gooseberries. Obviously, some of these mainly you get find in the garden, but you do find them elsewhere. Um, for instance, where birds have picked seeds off, ate things, and then dropped the seeds beforehand. Um, obviously, getting into the more the harder to um, identify ones, which is obviously there's a good pick of the the leaf and the flower with these you obviously you need to know what you're picking which is why obviously it goes into great detail obviously everyone knows what stinging nettle is everyone's fell into a patch of stinging nettles 
water, mint, hops, all the different mints, marjorams, bilberries, cranberries, the dandelion, everyone knows what a dandelion is. Same with plums, cherry plum. Yarrow, um, as mentioned on alone. Let's see, hazel, sweet chestnuts. So there's obviously quite a few things. Now get onto the poisonous things, because this is the thing. If you're going foraging best to know what can kill you as well because a lot of stuff can and it's not it's not the idea where if you think it's something you'll pick it and eat it you need to know 100% that it is what you think it is um, obviously some of the main ones that one which is hemlock water drop word um, Same with hemlock. Obviously the hemlock looks very similar to the cow parsley and everything. Obviously, as you can see that um that kind of looks like the fat hen, but it's not. Um so obviously it is quite a thingy. Quite a good book. Um, now this one is kind of difficult because most people think because a lot of people know that the yew berries, just the berry flesh, not the seed, not the branches, not the leaves are edible. So this one's in the poisonous one because most people don't know. Then get on the recipes, see what recipes. Obviously it's got a recipe for nettle soup. Plenty of wild garlic bits and pieces. Mainly everything's obviously the stuff that you find in abundance is what you need to use, like chickweed. Fat hen, hen chicken, watermelon, sorbet, bramble mousse. So that's quite a good few things in it. Um, it does actually have things for making elderflower delight, toffee, wildflower syrup, strawberries and brandy. Dandelion marmalade. See, these, this is one of my favourite recipes, the elderflower cordial. Uh, really nice recipe, that one. And it just gives you a little glossary of all of the um, the books. All of the, um, the terms that they use in the book. With some diagrams so you can, you can see what's, what's what. Um, obviously it's got bits in for reference books and stuff like that. And it does give you a list of um, which other books that you've got. Because I've actually got this one, I've got this one, I've got that one. So, I mean the book does... I don't know if you can see this, but the book is marked as okay, I'm on focus. Uh, marked down as fourteen ninety nine. Um but if you go on Amazon then you can get it I think it's about eleven ninety nine you get it on Amazon for. Um but obviously shop around. Um, the hardbacked, they are quite a sturdy book and really well worth the money if you're just getting into foraging and stuff like that. 
Um, so thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.